Hey folks, welcome back to Real Estate Investing Unmasked. Today we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of hard money. What are they? So first, let's start off with the pros. We know that when it comes to hard money lenders, your credit, it doesn't matter anymore. They're not worried about your credit. They're more worried about what the property is. See, when it comes to properties, they want to know, when it comes to hard money lending, the hard money lender wants to know what the loan to value is. So the loan to value, the way you determine that, your loan to value is the amount that you owe on the property divided by what the value of the property is. So if you owe $60,000, and it's worth $100,000, that equals a 60% loan to value. Boom. That's what they're worried about. They want to make sure that the property that they're lending you money on is worth more than what they're lending you the money to do. So if the property is worth hundred grand, they will lend you usually, hard money lenders will go up to 70,000 or 70% loan to value. Now there are some differences. There are some areas where when there is some growth, when there is expected growth by the hard money lender, because they do their research, when they expect that there's going to be some appreciation in the area, they actually will lend up even higher, sometimes as high as 95%. Now, if you get a hard money lender that's going to lend you up to 95%, one, that tells you that they think this is a great market that you're in. Two, they're probably going to charge you higher fees. And we'll, we'll get to the cons in just a moment. So first of all, your credit doesn't matter. It's all about the property. Hard money lenders are really good about giving you quick money. So if you're working, if you're going to an auction and you want to buy a property, you want to buy it fast, Within 48 hours, they can have you the cash. And if you're good and have all your information with this hard money lender, maybe you already have a relationship with them, you, they can have money to you within uh, as quickly as 24 hours. Now, that's pushing it, but they can do it. So hard money lenders are very good about get you, getting you money fast. Now, another pro can be that it's a short-term loan. It is expected to be a short-term loan, whereas traditional lenders... If you get a loan, use it, and you're getting like a 30-year mortgage, and you only use it for six months and sell the property, sometimes that can look bad on your credit. That can look bad on your credit. Whereas a hard money loan, if you get a hard money loan, you can do it for short term, and then it's expected for it to be a short term. So you're not going to go draw out this 30-year loan, this 30-year contract, where the traditional mortgage is going to take you 30 days to 45 days to fill out all the paperwork and, and get everything signed and get, and get the money. Instead, you can have it 24 to 48 hours, possibly, um, and you can have it very short, as short as 24-hour periods. For instance, if you're buying a property and you're flipping this property, you're wholesaling this property to somebody else, you get the property under contract. Let's say you get the property under contract for 90 grand, and you have another buyer that's going to buy this property from you for 110. There's a $20,000 spread there. A hard money lender will do a short-term loan when... The first day, your title company, they'll go ahead and close on the $90,000. That $90,000 will not come out of your pocket. That'll come out of the pocket of the hard money lender. Okay, you're going to pay some fees for that. You're going to pay a couple grand. Maybe they charge two, three, four grand to do that. But then the very next day, you get 110 grand in your pocket minus the fees you pay them. So instead of making 20, now you just made 15. We'll just give it a real life numbers. So you just made 15 grand. But the only way that was possible is if you had the cash to close that. That can happen. Now, there are some places, and I've done this, where I have a property that I'm buying, and I have a prop the same property I'm selling, and I'm selling it on the exact same day. And the title company will take the money from the person who's buying it from me and give that money over to the person who I'm buying it from, and they'll do a double close, a sandwich close. That is possible. However, when that's not possible, when your state won't allow that, or when your title company doesn't know how to do that, because there's some title companies that just don't do that. They deal so much with tra traditional purchases, they don't know about this creative stuff. 
It happens. Believe me, I've changed title companies a couple times for it. Hard money loans help out. So that's a good way, especially if you have somebody where the seller says, no, you have to close with my title company. Fine. Sometimes you get to get a hard money lender to bridge this gap for you. It's also called a bridge loan. So you've got a bridge loan that covers that short-term loan. They're amazing for this. Zero down possibility. Now, here's, here's where I have used hard money in the past. Uh, one of the first run-ins that I had with, with uh, hard money was with Silverado Funding. Silverado Funding, I believe they're out of Washington or Oregon. I don't even remember. Um, but I used them to buy a property uh, a long time ago. And what happened was we used the hard money, the hard money to buy the property. I immediately refinanced that property and it paid off the hard money lender and gave me $5,000 cash in my pocket right at closing. Okay. That's, that's one of the first properties I ever bought with hard money. That's one of the first experiences I had. So you are, it is possible to zero down, zero down possibilities, uh, zero down, um, purchases, acquisitions. Now that's zero dollars out of your pocket. The way that happened was the hard money lender rolled all of those fees into their loan. So while, yeah, I'm getting it zero down, it's almost like I'm getting 110 or 120% loan the way it turned out. Because I could have bought the property at this price, which was a really good deal, but because I rolled all those fees and everything in there just so I could do zero down, I ended up paying this much. And honestly, I would rather pay this much. So. It is possible, but if you can't afford to buy the property in the first place, maybe don't buy the property. Save up your money. If it's an amazing deal, let's say you find a property at 40% loan to value. And the reason you're getting it is because you know this person, or maybe you went knocking on the door and you said, Hey, I see that your property is kind of, you know, not in the best shape right now. And I know that, you know, my friend knows your friend knows your friend. And they said that you're kind of having some hard times that just need to get rid of this property. You know what? I will buy it from you today for forty-five thousand dollars cash, and it's worth a hundred grand, you know, something like that. And they're like, "Oh, how does it?" You know, whatever they do. So, you get a hard money lender, you pay the forty-five grand in cash with these guys, you close real fast to take care of those people, and then you go and and you fix it up with their money, and then you turn around and sell it. Then you get the cash out. You just did a zero-down property, but the loan to value—that's key. The loan to value has to be right. All right, so what are the cons? All these things are great. So what are the things that are that are detrimental to you? All right, here we have, oh man, here you go. High interest rates, that is huge. Right now I have a hard money loan and I'm paying 12% interest. Boy, that's an ugly 12. Right now? I'm paying 12% interest. That means 1% per month. Now, the other thing, I didn't put this down on pros, but this is one of them, is that you can get interest only loans. Interest only is phenomenal. If you're an investor, you're like, I don't want to spend my, my disposable cash on, on lowering down the principal. My whole point is to get this property, fix it up and sell it or to wholesale it or do whatever really, really fast, right? Short term loans. So getting interest only is phenomenal. Sometimes they'll even roll the interest right back on the loan and you don't have to pay anything. You're just, you're just focused on fixing the property. You're not focused on making payments until the property sells. And if you're doing a fix and flip, which you're supposed to be done within 90 days, it's not a big deal. Okay. Now, but you pay high interest rates to do this. There's a convenience factor because it is convenient. It costs more. So you got high interest rates. There's some around 12%. Now, in areas where I talked about where they'll do 95% loan to value, those are usually areas where they don't charge as much interest because it's, it's a booming area. Maybe they'll get as low as 7, 7.5% interest, and that's really good for a hard money loan, honestly. But normal is between 12, somewhere between 8 and 12% right now is pretty good. It's, that's about normal. Um, if you really don't know what you're doing and they can see that you're a sucker, it might go up to 15%, maybe 18%, but there are some states where it's really hard to get a hard money loan. And the state laws kind of make it difficult. Like Arkansas, I believe is one of those. I think Tennessee is another one where it's hard to get a hard money loan. Um, hard money lenders don't like to lend less than a certain amount. Usually that's about $50,000. 
For instance, I got a loan for four forty-five thousand dollars, and it took me some convincing to get this guy to give me the forty-five grand. Now, fortunately, my property in its construction phase was worth about a hundred grand, and I owed nothing on the property; it's paid off. So I borrowed forty-five grand. And he's like, "Okay, forty-five percent loan to value, sure thing. I'll get the money for you." But it took a little bit of convincing. All right, so high interest rates. There are high fees. Now, points are involved. If you don't know what a point is, essentially, here's the easy way to say it. it's 1% of the loan. It's prepaid interest. So if, you're, if your loan is 100000 one point is 1000 bucks. They may charge five points. That's prepaid interest again. So that's $5,000 just for the ability to borrow the money. That isn't even interest on what you're borrowing. It's just paying 5% up front. Ugh. That hurts. But, once again, this is quick money. It's really fast, fast money. So high fees, those are the points. Uh, you will have to pay appraiser fees, so you're going to have to pay the closing fees. There, there are things that you're going to have to pay. They are short-term loans. So while this is a pro, it is also a con. Because sometimes when you fix up that property, maybe it is, maybe the market turned a little bit in three or four months. And you're like, ah, I can't sell my properties easily now. Lenders now, hard money lenders, quite often, even though they want to get that property because that property is where their money is, quite often they'll give you an extension. Hey, we'll give you six months. We'll give you six months more than the six months we've already given you. So then you end up being a year. Usually they don't want to go longer than 24 months. My loan I got was a 24-month loan because I said, look, I'm rehabbing the place and I want to have the time to take care of this. And I'm doing a lot of the work myself. Because I'm doing a lot of the work myself, I knew that I'm only doing it on the weekends. I'm not doing it as often as maybe somebody else is doing a fix and flip full time. So I wanted to have the time and I'm paying for it, but that's what I got, short term loan. In the end, it's only short term. So it could be three months, it could be six months, whatever you plan, you had best know that you can sell that property and have that property refinanceable within that time period or that you can sell it. If you don't, you could very well spend all that time and effort so that they can get the property. They buy, they actually get the property from you and they sell it and make all that money that you were going to make. So that could be a con. Geography bound. As I mentioned, there are some places where it's illegal to lend money through hard money or in some, some cases. So if you're in one of those states, for instance, when it comes to lending, talk to any lender and they'll tell you there are different zones in the United States. And depending on your zone, it's very easy to get a loan or it's very hard to get a loan. For instance, when I was buying property in Ohio, I believe that was zone four, zone D. It was very hard to get a loan in that area because there's so many defaults. Just on average, in that geography, in that geographical area, there are a lot of defaults. Whereas in California, for instance, Southern California, maybe there aren't as many defaults. And so it's a zone one. And that's a hotbed for hard money lenders and just lenders in general. Okay. So it is geography based. If you're working, if you live like say in Texas or Nebraska, maybe it's harder to get the loans that you want. Partially because they don't want to do less than the fifty thousand typically. And if you need more than that, or if you need less than that to buy the property, fix it up because houses are much cheaper, or duplexes, or triplexes, or quadru, you know, fourplexes, etc., are a little bit cheaper. Maybe you won't be able to get as much as you want because of geography. All right, all right. So that's that's what hard money lenders are. I hope that you found this useful. If you have any questions about being able to find a hard money lender in your area, uh, or if you have questions about the process of getting a hard money loan, I am, I'm in talks right now with, with a hard money lender that I'm dealing with, and I've, I've asked him if he'd be willing to sit down with him uh, as an interview with me and ask him some questions that maybe you would have. So if you have questions about hard money lending, ask them down below, because I may use those to ask my, my lender to see what he'll say. And uh, maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down twice and then subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Till next time.